Hey, my name is Eddie Joe. I'm a critical care medicine doctor and today is October 19th, 2018. So the data I'm gonna be showing you today is from before today, obviously. Um, this particular talk is going to be about IV fluids and the fact that the IV fluids that we give our patients are not necessarily retained to a one-to-one -one ratio like one would think. Well, some people would think. And I'm gonna basically go over the points behind all of that. Now, I'd like to thank you first of all for clicking on my video. If you learn anything, and I'm sure you're gonna learn something from this video, please click the like button and help my channel grow, okay? Also subscribe if you haven't, and I have some affiliate links for Amazon down uh, in the comment, not in the comments, but in the description box, which you could click on to buy something on Amazon, and I'll make a commission of some sort, like 1% or one, some nonsense like that. Anyway, this is not me telling you how to manage your patients. Most critically ill patients do need resuscitation, and use your clinical judgment. Don't go by what I say. Research everything I tell you. All these articles are gonna be listed below please check those out, okay? Don't trust me. And, you know, part of the reason why I did this is because I was surprised by the answers I found when I went down the rabbit hole of researching all of this. And um, one would think that if you hang a liter of fluids, that a liter is gonna go into their intravascular space, but this is, this is definitely not so. But how much do you think you retain of that one liter? Not a lot. And um, I had heard about these particular numbers through hearsay, but I actually went ahead and looked it up myself. Now, you can use this particular data to show off in front of your peers and your colleagues, okay? And like I said, if you learn anything, please click on the like button, it'll help me out. I honestly feel that this should be common knowledge considering the fact that we give over 200 million bags of saline in the US every single year. And that's a lot of fluids if you really think about it. I'm not one to give fluids willy-nilly. Please don't put patients on maintenance fluids just because. Think about it. Because after all, fluids can cause harm. Now, there's a particular uh, paper that I'm gonna link below written by Dr. Paul Merrick who has written a ton of papers on fluids, resuscitation, also the whole vitamin C uh, protocol. And you know, in this particular in this particular paper, he discusses the different manifestations that are seen in different organ systems based on giving people too much fluid. For example, if you go ahead and flood the patients, you could cause pulmonary edema, impair oxygenation in these patients, cause an increased work of breathing and also alter their chest wall mechanics with their lungs. With regards to their cardiovascular function, you could cause arrhythmias, in other words, conduction deficits, you could cause diastolic dysfunction, as well as decreased contractility of the myocardium. Increased intra-abdominal pressures, you know, both the liver and the kidneys are encapsulated organs, so if you just swallow them up with a bunch of fluids, they're not gonna function properly. That's something you need to consider. So you'll get more hepatic dysfunction and acute kidney injury. And with regards to your gastrointestinal system, you know, being loaded up with too much fluid could cause malabsorption, bacterial translocation. You could also get ileus, you know, and if you have a surgical wound and you're all swollen, well, there's gonna be decreased healing of that wound. So fluids are not benign. And I really want to emphasize that to you because it's important, okay? So carrying on with our particular studies that I'm gonna talk about. The first particular study, which is titled, uh, I'll probably put something right here. Anyway, the effect of loading, excuse me, the effect of volume loading with one liter of IV infusions of all this stuff that you see here. And this was something that was done on medical students, most likely, um, but basically, they were able to see in this particular study of healthy volunteers, people who are hopefully like you and I, who they gave them a liter of fluid and after an hour they noticed that 68% of that liter was extravasated into the uh, extravascular space. In other words, only about 300 cc's of that liter still remained in those patients' blood vessels after, well not those patients, but in those volunteers' blood vessels after an hour. 68% gone into the tissue. So all this, the Q, the belly, the lungs, 
everywhere where it's not supposed to be. That number is crazy. But wait, there's more. There's also this study, oh, by the way, that study was published in 2010 in Critical Care Medicine. The link is gonna be below for that article. Um, I'm sure there are ways that you could obtain it. But it's a, it's a, fun, it's a fun little study. This other study that I'm gonna to talk to you about is from the, Ameri from the Journal of um, the American Society of Nephrology. Wow, that's, that's quite a mouthful. And this particular study was published in 2001. And in this, particular, in this particular study, they noted that if you have a critically ill patient, you give them a liter of fluid, they extravasate 80% of that liter in 20 to 30 minutes. 20 to 30 minutes, 80% gone, okay? And I'm gonna quote the study here. It says, their effect on plasma vo volume expansion of approximately 200 cc's for every 1,000 cc's administered with an intravascular half-life of 20 to 30 minutes. That's absolutely mind-blowing. That critically ill patient, give them a liter of saline, 80% of it, and it's gone. Like that South Park episode that has since turned into a meme. I'll probably make a meme out of this. Hmm. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's just something to be very cognizant about when you give these patients fluids. But wait, there's more. This particular study that was published in 2013 also in Critical Care Medicine, and again, the link is gonna be in the description box below, talks about you know infusing, infusing uh, septic rats with IV fluids and seeing what the effect was of it. And I'm gonna quote the, I'm gonna quote the study really quick. It says, when giving a crystalloid so solution under normal circumstances, approximately 75% of the infused volume is distributed quickly to the interstitial space. That is what's considered normal circumstances. You lose 75%. That's kind of like the same thing I was mentioning with that first study, which uh, basically showed that you extravasate 68% within an hour, okay? This study noticed that less than 5% of the IV fluids administered to septic rats, and they use rats because rats have some similar, you know, obviously not the same, but they have similar like calyx and epithelium as, as the one we do. They noticed that after three hours of infusion, that fluid that was given, less than 5% was still in the intravascular space. That means that the rest of it, all that, theoretical plasma volume expansion that we were that we were expecting is not there less than five percent of it is there and one of the very interesting little nuances of the study <laughs> that, that they mentioned and once again this was also a very nerdy study i liked it a lot says a lot about me huh is that they noted that the lactate <laughs> of these septic rats may have been cleared just because of dilution <laughs> i find this obviously very entertaining because we are, and when I say we, I mean the, the medical community seems to be obsessed with clearing lactate right now. And uh, that, that, that's very entertaining to me. But here they say that the lactate went down because they diluted it to death. Entertaining. So um, what they did notice is that the patients who got plasma volume expansion with saline compared to the control group, which didn't get any plasma volume expansion, there was no, it didn't differ significantly. So basically it's as if they hadn't done much. I'm not gonna tell you how that changes your practice or anything like that, but nevertheless, here are the important numbers you need to know. If you're healthy, you get a liter of fluid, 68% of it is gone within an hour, okay? In the, in the extravascular space. Now, if you're sick and you get a liter of fluid, you're going to extravasate 80% of that in an hour. That's a lot. And finally, if you are a septic rat, which I don't think you're gonna be a septic rat, but nevertheless, the fluids you give these, these particular septic rats, they're going to extravasate over 95% of it within three hours. That's a lot. So to conclude everything, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope, you, I hope you learned something. And if you did learn something, click the like button. 
because that's gonna help my channel grow. Subscribe if you haven't already. And double check on my work because remember, you can't trust me. Thanks, bye.